Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of Winload Generation in Stat Pro Connect Edition. I am Surajit Ghosh and in this video, I will cover how we can generate Winload on various components of a cladded warehouse building including load on wall and pitch roof. Calculation and generation of Winload on sloped roof is a bit tricky. How we can easily generate this in STAD both manually and using an automation tool? That I will cover in detail. In last part, I have covered the basics of wind application and used the wind load generator to apply load on different face of a cladded building structure. You can check that video for more details. Using same wind load generator, how we can generate wind load for any pitch roof industrial structure or open frame plant structure that we are going to explore. Let's start with this cladded warehouse type of structure. It is a PEB structure with tapered column and rafter with few breast panel. All side and back of the structure is completely covered with cladding unit with few small opening. Most of the front side is open with a large entrance. This type of structure is very common and if we want to analyze this for wind load, first we need to understand how wind load is distributed to different element of the structure considering wind from two orthogonal direction x and z separately. When wind is applied from any of this direction, all the walls are subjected to wind pressure, direct external pressure on that face and internal pressure on all the walls. Along with that, wind pressure is applied on the inclined roof in the normal direction. Net pressure on roof might be in the outward direction, trying to blow up the roof or in the inward direction, depending on several factor. There are some area of the wall and roof which are subjected to higher pressure like the corner of the wall and roof, overhang portion. Finally, for few specific shape of the structure, force due to frictional drag is required. All this loading condition should be combined under a unique wind load case and then repeated for all other direction. Within these load items, only wind load on walls considering external and internal pressure coefficient can be generated using wind load generator. We need to add wind load on any inclined roof either manually with nodal or member load or by using a custom automation tool. Same method needs to be followed to add local pressure and frictional drag. This additional pressure on wall or roof edge is calculated using the local coefficient value from respective table. Though it is important to consider this local pressure for structural analysis and design, but in some projects, these are only used for connection design. It is better to add this load during wind load generation. If required, we can easily neglect this from member design and consider only for connection design using load list or envelope command. Consider wind load from positive x direction. To calculate wind pressure on the walls, we need CPE and CPI value. For this rectangular clad building, external pressure coefficient for wall is available in table 5. For this loading condition, side walls can be denoted like this and we can find the relevant CPE value for different wall based on H by W and L by W. Also, we need to use CPE value as 1 for the corner strip. Width of each strip is 6.25 meter. For pitch roof, external pressure coefficient is available in table 6. Slope of the roof is 10 degree. Pressure on the roof is not uniform. Based on the loading direction, different part of the roof is subjected to different pressure. From this table, we can notice that for x direction wind, both windward and leeward side is subjected to same nature of load though the factor is different. Also, we need to consider local coefficient to apply higher amount of load at the edge of roof with width 3.75 meter. Next, we require the internal pressure coefficient. This is a bit tricky as for this structure, 
opening is different in x and z. So technically we cannot use same CPI value like 0.2 or 0.5 for all wind direction. There is a large opening in one side and we need to use figure 2 for CPI. For x direction load, CPI value is 0.7. Maximum CPI value is 0.8 when wind is applied from negative z axis. Difference is very small, so we can use 0.8 as the CPI value. That's all we require for complete wind load application from positive x direction. Similarly, we need to calculate the coefficient when wind is applied from z direction or negative x direction. Though this structure is subjected to frictional drag as per clause 7.4.1, I am not going to cover it in this session due to time restraint. Rather, I'll focus on how we can generate this load instead. By the way, only wall loads can be generated using wind load generator. We need to generate rest of the loads manually. There are few tricks to minimize the manual effort that I'll cover. Dead, live and seismic loads are already generated. For wind load generation, first we'll use this wind load generator following IS875 part 3 for rectangular clad building. This height is used for wind pressure calculation at different height. It is not used for CPE calculation. Hence, we need to use maximum structure height. Along with all required parameters like location, risk factor, importance factor, terrain category, based on which height versus intensity data is generated and used for wind application. In second page, we can provide pressure coefficient for different wall based on which wind loads are added to the model. Height should be specified as the height of eaves 8.5 meter as suggested in table 5 and 6. Based on this dimension, CPE value for all the walls are automatically generated for each direction of wind load. If required, we can edit this. Also, we can use force coefficient as per clause 7.4. For internal pressure coefficient, we'll use a custom value as it is different from the default limit, 0.8. There is no option available to provide different internal pressure for different direction. That's why we have considered the maximum value. As mandated by the code, we'll generate separate wind load case with positive and negative CPI value. Using this wizard, we cannot generate wind load on roof by specifying separate pressure coefficient. It is only for the wall. For load assignment, if we select this automatic option, program considers all members in that side, including the roof, which is not correct for this pitch roof structure. CP for roof is different. Also, the nature of load application is different from the wall. For inclined roof, we can either provide the modified member list or group name or just select the range option and specify the height as 8.5 meter for wall A and B and full height with modified Z range for C and D. With this input, program will generate wind load up to IPS level, ignoring the roof. Eight load case are now generated. Wind load is applied from four different direction and for each direction, two separate load cases generated for positive and negative CPI. As you can notice, load is applied only on the walls. Now we need to add wind load on the roof for each load case. By the way, if the structure is symmetric about both axes, then we can generate wind load only from positive x or z axis and consider load from negative axis using combination factor minus 1. But if the structure is not symmetric or opening size and exposure is different, then it is better to generate wind load from all four directions. There are multiple methods of wind load generation for the roof. We can add all the loads manually as an inclined nodal load or member load, which is really time consuming. There is one easier approach. We have already calculated the net pressure coefficient, CPE minus CPI value for roof. 
wind pressure at the roof level is also available in the wind definition. It is generated by the program during wind load generation for the walls. Using this, we can calculate the effective pressure acting on the roof, which is Cp into Pd, and apply this as a floor load perpendicular to the inclined roof. Consider the first load case, where wind is applied from positive x direction. CPE for windward direction is 1.2 and leeward direction is 0.4. CPI is 0.8, which means net CPE is 2 and 1.2, considering positive CPI value. Wind pressure at roof level is 1.6, so flow load intensity should be 3.2 for left portion and 1.92 for right. As this is an inclined floor, it is not possible to apply a floor load directly on the roof using range option. This will produce incorrect result. For such an inclined floor, we need to create a floor group with all the members subjected to load distribution. Either we can use all rafter and purlin members or only purlin members which supports the roof cladding. I have already generated two separate floor groups one for the left group and another one for the right and used this group for dead and live load assignment. Now we will use same groups for wind load generation on roof. In the floor load window, specify the load intensity, then select group option and group name. Finally, switch on this inclined floor option to apply the load correctly on this inclined roof. We need to generate two floor load, one for the left and another one for the right with different intensity. Now this wind load case combines the wind load on the wall and also on the roof. I think this is the easiest approach to apply wind load on the inclined roof considering correct pressure coefficient value and wind pressure. Using similar approach, we can calculate the intensity and add roof wind load under other load case. For wind load from Z direction, pressure variation on roof is along the length. Both part of the roof is subjected to same pressure, but it varies in the middle of the roof. For load application, we can simply create four separate groups considering E, F, G and H portion of load distribution plan. Then apply the wind load as floor load using these groups. There are few limitations of this wind load generator. It cannot generate wind load on roof. Also, local wind loads like wind load on corner of the wall and roofs are not considered. We need to add these loads manually under each wind load case. First, identify the members which are located within the strip. Then apply the loads manually as nodal load or member load which will take some additional time. There is an easier approach, which can generate all the force components easily in a single click using a custom macro. I have developed this tool with VBA using few OpenStat functions, which are required to generate wind definition and apply load in any stat model. OpenStat is a module of stat using which we can access the stat engine and perform several action like generate a complete 3D structure, add load, specification or design parameter. Even we can extract any result from a STAD model as per our requirement. I have developed several such tools using OpenStat function, few of which are already available in the community site. You can download and use it. With this user tool, we can generate complete wind load specification including load on wall, roof, corner load with local coefficient. Only we need to provide few input which are required for wind load generation. I have developed this for Indian code. We can specify the location of the structure, class, terrain category, slope and importance factor which are used for height versus intensity data calculation. Then few information related to the structure. This tool can generate wind load for any pitch roof or monoslope roof structure 
and cladded building. I'll use this to generate wind load on same warehouse structure with pitch roof. We can provide the structure dimension. Slope of the roof is internally calculated using model data or we can manually define it. Finally, we need to map one corner node of the STAD model with this tool. It is required to identify the structure orientation and location of member for load assignment. Node number of the front left corner is required, which we can check from the STAD model. Node number is 173. For load generation, there are multiple options, including application of wind load on the member as UDL, whether it's a cladded building or any unclad building structure. We can also apply the load as nodal load or floor load on roof. For floor load, all those floor group are automatically added to the model and loads are generated with inclined floor option. For this structure, I will generate wall load and add roof load as nodal load. That's all. If we click on generate, all required wind loads are added to the model. In the output page, intermediate values are reported, like the factors used for load calculation, pressure coefficient including the load distribution diagram, for wind load from x and z direction, local coefficient value. All these loads are added to the STAD model under different load case. Check the STAD model. Eight different load case are generated similar to wind load generator. Each of these load case contain load on the walls, considering internal and external pressure coefficient, load on roof as nodal load perpendicular to the roof. This load is generated considering both pressure coefficient and local coefficient value with different load intensity at different location. Using such an automation technique, we can generate entire wind load specification for any type of structure. No manual effort is required. I always prefer this type of user tool over manual approach as it is easy to use and save lot of time. That's all about application of wind load on cladded warehouse or plant structure. There are several other type of industrial structure like building with sawtooth or monoslope group with skylight or composite slope. For this structure, calculation of wind load is different, but load generation process is same. Let me know if you think a detailed session on this is required. That's all for today. In the next part, I'll cover how to apply wind load on an unclad frame structure like a pipe rack structure using wind load generator. Keep watching.